Shalom, call Halayim Yah Bashim Yahshai Bashim Rakakadash. All praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh Bashim Yahshai Bashim Rakakadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and salutations to all you brothers out there, teachers, word, and truth, and sincerity, and your faith. Shalom to the whole full elect, the one third of the nation of Israel, scattered to the four corners of the earth. You're the Hebrew Israelites, you so called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. This is Gadda Juan doing a video here on, you know, just the spirit you need to be in, all right? <clears throat> all right? There's a lot of guys out there that just want to leave comments and talk, you know, speak on everything. And then it gets to the point where they start looking foolish, you know? So you don't want to be like that guy. You want to be the brother that is shame-fasted and, and, and humble and meek, Okay? Not the person that just wants to be everywhere on every comment board, on every text message, on every video, okay? You want to be spiritual. And how do you be spiritual and how do you be righteous? Well, you got to read what the scriptures say. This is Ecclesiastes 32. I was going to start at 7, but I'm going to start at 1. If thou be made the master of a feast... Lift not thyself up, but be among them as one of the rest. Take diligent care for them, and so sit down. And when thou hast done all thy office, take thy place that thou mayst be married with them, and receive a crown for thy well ordering of the feast. So when you have a feast, right, you put on, or you're a host of an event. Or dinner, you know. You're not supposed to be like, "Hey, I'm the boss here." This is, you know, you you're humble. You you tend to your guest. You be among them as one of the rest and take diligent care of them. You ask your boys, everyone, pleased with their food. Would you like anything else? Do you need water? Would you like some more wine? And then, as soon as everyone says no, we're fine. And then, what are they gonna say? Come on, take a seat, sit down, man. You're working too hard. Have have something to drink, you know. And it says, and when thou hast done all of the office, take thy place. So after you've done everything you're supposed to, you checked in on everyone, the food's ready. Then you can sit down, then you can eat, then you can enjoy the feast. And then you can be merry with everyone. And then what does everyone do? They praise you and they give you honoring for their well ordering of the feast. Like, wow, the water, man, that was amazing. The food was great. The water to your wife for cooking, if she helped, you know. That was, or if you cooked it all, man, it's... It's all spiritual. Okay. Speak thou that art the elder, for it becometh thee. But with sound judgment, and hinder not music. That's right. So if you are an elder brother, you are the head of the camp. You got to speak up on certain occasions, you know. People are expecting you to say something. So you got to, that's when, that's when someone's supposed to speak, all right. Thou art the elder, all right? So sometimes brothers that are in, uh, put in that position, you don't want to say, oh, you want to fall back. Sometimes that's not the case. you got to speak up. But with sound judgment, right? Don't just be saying BS and hinder not music. So if the music's going and everyone's enjoying the music, you just don't just cut it off and like, hey, i got to say something, you know? you got to have that sound judgment. Pour not out words where there is a musician and show not forth wisdom out of time. That's right. If somebody's making beautiful music or brothers are, you know, just, and really the music is this words, is this, is this, the spirit, right? When you're teaching this word, that's the true song, right? That's the song. But also in a literal sense, if there's someone there playing music, Right, good music, you're not just supposed to be speaking over it. And people are trying to enjoy the musician. Right? Let's say you're at the feast and you got a live band playing, you got a brother that's on the piano singing or whatever. You're supposed to be speaking over that man. Show not forth wisdom out of time. Yeah, sometimes you can make yourself look stupid just by trying to be overwise on things like, hey man, the, you know, th that actually means this. Or really, it goes deeper than that, blah, 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 you know? You just need to chill out, man, okay? A concert of music and a banquet of wine is as a signet of carbuncle set in gold. 
As a signet of an emerald set in a work of gold, so is the melody of music with pleasant wine. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee. And yet, scarcely, when thou art at twice asked. Yeah, sometimes like, hey man, what, what do you think? Let's hear from the young man. We want to hear from you. If, if, if it's on the spirit for the brothers to say that to you, then you're like, oh, and I'm okay. I, I'm not too sure. You know, you got to be humble about it. Yet scarcely when thou art twice asked, because you be you you take that humble role, brothers are gonna egg, egg you on, right? Like, come on, what, what, come on. Especially if it's like the apostles or the elders. Like, come on, man, don't be afraid. Come on, speak. Still, yet scarcely do it, right? Still hold that that spirit within you, man. Be like, you know what? I'm, just, you know, just say a few words here or there, and that's it. They're like, okay, breathing. Let thy speech be short comprehending much in few words be as one that knoweth and yet holdeth his tongue if thou be among great men make not thyself equal with them and when ancient men are in place use not many words right so like i was in verse 7 it says scarcely when thou art twice asked so now now you have to speak you speak short okay comprehending much in few words because what does that do like oh wow this brother's straight to the point he said what he had to say that's it well, you don't want to be a rambler or a babbler okay be as one that knoweth and yet holdeth his tongue yeah because you may know the answer but you're going to hold your tongue for that due time because why because you're spiritual Right? If thou be among great men, and great men are, you know, I'm going to say this very humbly, are the men starting, are the heads of your camps. Okay? The heads of the individual great millstone camps. Those are great men. And not only just, sometimes you're a head of a camp, and your camp is, what, three years old? You need to chill out, man. Especially if you're around men that have been doing this thing 10 plus years. All right? You can't make yourself equal with them. Hey, I'm a head of the camp too. I'm a camp head too, so I could talk. Nah, man. If thou be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. Yeah, oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in now. I can speak whenever I feel. I can say whatever I want. Everyone's going to listen to me. Right? All you're going to do is show yourself to be a fool, really. If you're in that spirit, man. If thou be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. And when ancient men are in place, use not many words. And those ancient men are our apostles and elders, right? And they're in place, man. If they're, you're around them, you don't want to say shit, man. When I, me speaking from experience, I was real clear. But I was real short. <laughs> I was real short spoken with them, you know? And I didn't try to use too many words. And it gets to the point where, you know, they'll give you a look. If you say a little, say a little bit too much, you know. You're like, okay, man, I need to, I need to chill, you know. But you got to be in the spirit to even see that, okay. So, don't make yourself equal, okay, with men that've been doing this thing ten plus, twenty plus, thirty years, okay. And same with men that are done this for ten years. We don't, I don't try to make, you know, our myself equal with men that've been doing this two decades. All right. You got to be spiritual. Okay. It's before thunder go lightning, and before a shame faced man shall go favor. That's right. So before thunder go lightning. So like sometimes you see th you see lightning, right? You can see it, but you don't hear it. Then you hear it later, right? And before a shame faced man shall go favor. So if you're before they they see your shame face. You know, you're humble, okay? The Lord, you're going to have lots of favor on you. Brother's brother's going to have nothing nothing bad to say about you. Okay? They're not going to have anything bad to say about Oh, that brother's real spiritual, man. He's real humble. He's a beautiful brother. Okay? Let me get uh, another precept here. Sirach 20 and 1. There is a reproof that is not comely. Again, some man holdeth his tongue, and he is wise. Yeah, a reproof is not comely, like meaning 
most most times when people correct you for something, it's not going to be nice, all right? It's going to hurt your feelings. You're going to get all worked up about it. You may get demons on you, <laughs> all right? But hey, the scriptures say there's a reproof that is not comely. Again, some man holds his tongue and he's counted wise. So a lot of those times when you're getting reproved, you just got to shut the hell up, man. All right? You, you hold your tongue, you don't speak, and the, the spirit has it that, hey, you're wise. And why are you wise? What's the beginning of wisdom? You have fear. You have the fear, Yah, but she may all shy on you, right? And with that, proves that you're a man of the Lord, okay? And other people are going to see that. Other men of the Lord are going to see that because you're in the spirit. They're going to see what spirit you're in. It is much better to reprove than to be angry secretly. And he that confesses his fault Shall be preserved from her. That's right. So, you know, you don't want to be like, ah, oh, this guy again, man. He's always opening his mouth. Hey, I got something to fucking say. Instead of being mad at the guy secretly, it's better to be like, hey, boom, boom, boom. Here's the scriptures. You hit him with the scriptures. Because you just can't reprove somebody for like, hey, man, I don't like that. Hurt my feelings. Yeah, sometimes you just got demons on you, man. All right. If it doesn't relate to the scriptures, you need to chill. Your damn self. All right. But it's much better to prove than to be angry secretly, all right? You got to be the A. I'm, what you're doing right now is not in the spirit. And, and it's not setting well with me. All right? And he that confesses his fault shall be preserved from hurt. So would you, you're you supposed to confess your fault. You're supposed to acknowledge what you're being reproved on. Okay? And if you don't, you're like, oh, all right, what can I say? I right, Salakia. All I can say is Salakia. You know, you don't want to confess your fault. You want to confront the things you did specifically that's what confessing your fault is you're supposed to say hey i was in the spirit i shouldn't have said that i was being a demon i had demons on me i need to fast i really bulk shot I, I really want to repent i really want to get away from this shit you know brothers pray for me that's that's how you confess your fault not by like oh salaki that's all i can say salak that that proves that you're just a demon man verse three how good is it when thou art reproved to show repentance? For so shalt thou escape willful sin. <laughs> that's, so that's very, very spiritual. All right. So when someone is reproving you, you got to show that repentance, man. And the Akim, all right, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, they're going to see it. All right. You can't just blame one guy. Oh, yeah, he don't like me. Wait, well, but everyone else saw it. Everyone else could see that you're not showing repentance. <laughs> For so shalt thou escape willful sin. That's right. So being that willful sin is what? Opening your mouth, being doing stupid shit. Okay. You got to show that repentance, man. You got to really acknowledge what you did wrong. All right. And, and bring it out to the Akya. And, and understand what you did was wrong. And, and, Think about the things that you got to do to correct that. And you express that, right? You got to express it. If you don't express it, you don't acknowledge it, you're just full of shit, man. All right? And you got to work on it. Hey, I do too. We all got to do it, man. All right? It says, as is the lust of a eunuch to deflower a virgin, so is he that executed judgment with violence. There is one that keeps silence and is found wise, and another by much babbling becometh hateful. That's right. Sometimes um, it's better just to keep silence, man. Because well, if you're silent, the worst thing they can say about you is, like, why aren't you saying nothing? You need to speak up. That's the worst they can say. They can't say, oh, you're a demon. Oh, you ain't saying nothing. That doesn't make any sense. They could just get on you and say, hey, man, you need to speak up. That's about it. Then what do you do? You speak up. And, you, and like it says in Ecclesiastes 37, 32 that we just read, you speak up and, and you comprehend much in very few words. Okay. But also the words you're, you're using has to be sincere and you got to be showing that repentance in your, exp in your expressing of that repentance. Okay. The acknowledgement of, of of your of your uh, transgression. That's the only way, really, to repent. How else do you repent? You got to acknowledge that transgression, man. 
And it says here, and another by much babbling become a fable. You keep running your mouth. You got something to say about everything. You just, you always got something to say. You become hateful, man. That's why it's better just to shut the F up. That's why it says here, some man holdeth his tongue because he hath not to answer. And some keep of silence, knowing his time. A wise man will hold his tongue till he see opportunity, but a babbler and a fool will regard no time. That's right. Yeah, sometimes you don't you don't know what to say, man, so you just shut up. And sometimes you keep your silence because you know it's not your time to speak. Alright? You gotta let everyone else say what they gotta say, then then you're ready to say. You know, and a lot of times that makes you wiser because you can hear everyone's opinion and and, and, and stance on something. You can, and then that makes you, what you got to say next even better. Instead of you speaking out of turn, and then you end up looking rude and 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 and, and uh, disrespectful. Okay. Especially like we read earlier, especially around great men, your elders. Okay. It says, he that uses many words shall be abhorred, and he that taketh to himself authority therein shall be hated. Yeah, the words you use, man, you, you keep running your mouth, people are going to abhor you. He that taketh to himself authority therein shall be hated. And you think all the words you're saying, there's authority in it. Yeah, I said this. You know, all that, you know, you boast in it. People are going to start hating you, man. All right. So you don't want to be like that, all right? You want to be the man, a wise man, all right? You want to hold your tongue. What do you get from this, from these, from these passages? It's clear. It's better to shut the f up <laughs> than to babble and say some and have an opinion on every damn thing, man. You don't want to be that guy, man. You want to be the wise man. You want to be the guy that nobody got anything to say bad about. Like, oh, what, what about this brother? Have you seen this? Heard about this brother? Really, I have nothing to really say. I don't really know. That's better than, yeah, man, this this fucking guy, right? You don't want to be that guy, man. Who who you want to be that guy? Like who is that guy? What the what the what the fuck is going? You don't want to be like that, man. All right. And sometimes it starts off rocky like that. All right. I know for me personally, it did too. It, you know, who are these guys? <laughs> Ten years ago, who are these guys, man? These guys are crazy. No, no, no. Hey, man, we got to learn the hard way. We're still learning. Yet, from my experience, I have to share that amongst the Akia, man. All right. I've been rebuked pff, countless times. All right. Starting with the apostles and elders on down to the brothers in the camp. Okay. Not to mention growing up, <laughs> but more so in this truth. That's real reproof. Because when they rebuke you and reprove you, it's out of love, man. Okay, not not the, the the condemn, and that's what your brothers gotta get those demons off of you, man. Okay, when people reprove you, they want you to see what you're doing is wrong. They want to correct you and make sure that you don't go off, man. You don't condemn yourself. Why do you think the so-called white man got a thing called pleading the fifth? You have the right to remain silent. Yeah, they can't force words out of you, because when people force words out of you, all that does is what? It incriminates yourself. You don't want him to do that, man. Like even the Lord, Yahweh Shai, when they wanted him to speak, he didn't say nothing. Right? Speak. He's like, yeah, I got shit to say to y'all, man. And then when he did say something, it was very spiritual. All right? I'm speaking about the time of his crucifixion. Okay? Yeah. Go on this. Proverbs 17 and 28. Even a fool. Oh, actually. Yeah. Proverbs 17 and 27. He that have knowledge spareth his words. And a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed. A man of understanding. So, when you spare your words, 
that proves that you got knowledge. I'm like, oh, this guy's a smart guy, right? Because when because when you open your your mouth, you want to say something. Uh, you know, you don't want to have a, how how they say. You know, just just fodder, just words without any meaning. You just you just rapping. You don't want to be like that. You just want to be, be <laughs> like uh, you got like certain poems are real short. They use very few words, and those are like classics. You never read a poem, and it's three pages long, man. That's not a poem, all right? It's too many words. That's a story, okay? Poems are, are very in-depth, and they use very few words, but the words mean a lot. And that proved, that person who wrote that poem had knowledge, okay? And a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit, right? So if you have an understanding, you have that excellent spirit, and that excellent spirit acknowledges all these scriptures, okay? Even a fool when he holds his peace is counted wise, and he that shut up his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. So, how are you? How do you esteem the man of understanding? When you shut your lips, you stop speaking, all right? And you listen. Because how do you get understanding? You gotta listen, man. You gotta listen. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta soak it in. All right, you got to be the guy that's there soaking it in. You you got you you're new you're new to the team. All right, you just don't you just don't start talking over the captains. All right, you got to work your way up. You you got to soak it up from the captains, man. Like uh, you go to a sports right, the locker room. What do they do to the rookies? The rookies they gotta they gotta work their way up. They gotta, you know, they do a little bit of hazing to them, you know. To prove them, okay? That really, to set the hierarchy, the order, that really you're not on our level, man. You're not on our level. You need to get up to this level. And you know what? I was at your level at one point, and I had to do that too. So boom, 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 boom. All right? It's all spiritual. You got to be very, very spiritual in this truth. <laughs> it's the only way to be in this truth. Otherwise, you're not in the truth. You're just a demon. All right? The Lord going to get you. You don't want to be that guy, man. So even a fool holding his tongue is kind of wise. Yeah, sometimes you could be a complete bug out, but you shut your mouth. You at least at least he shut his mouth. There's I know a lot of <laughs> I'm not gonna say that, but man, some dudes they wouldn't be in this thing, man. If they if they kept if they ran their mouth, man. All right, they would not be in this thing if they ran their mouth. So you gotta think. You gotta think. You gotta be spiritual, man. Okay. Uh, one last scripture here. This is Ecclesiastes three and one. To everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence. And a time to speak. All right. So the you you can't do both at the same time when you read this. All right. You can't be born and die at the same time. All right. You can't plant something and just pluck it up. That which is planted, you just that, that don't make no sense. All right. Same thing with keeping silence and speaking. So you got to understand what time the time we're in, man. We're at the we're at the time of you showing. That you're a man of understand, that you showing yourself to be in the, a man of the Lord, that you have the fear of Yabashi Shai, man. Okay? You don't want to be the dude that's fearless. Okay? And you think the Lord, which yeah, I pray that the Lord's with me hundred percent, man. I pray, I pray. But you can't be overconfident, man. Alright? And just be using that as a cloak of militia. Oh, I could do whatever I want, the Lord's with it. Nah, man. You don't know that. You can pray that. You can pray for that. You can hope for that. But you can't be set in that, man. 
What we're set in is our faith in Yahabashim al man. That Yahabashim al you know, that if we pray to him, we believe upon him, and, and, we, and we pray that he has mercy on us, man. Okay? And that's all we can ask for. While doing what we're supposed to be doing, which is set here in the scriptures, okay? So, brothers, you know, when brothers correct you, you know, don't get offended. But also, acknowledge what you're doing wrong. Acknowledge it, man. Bring it out. Right? And if you can't come to if you can't come to that peace within yourself, man, you need you really need to pray. You really need to fast. You need to do a little something, man, with yourself. Because chances are the Lord gonna do something to you. And you don't want that to happen, man. And with that, I'm gonna give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahushai, Bahashim Rakadash. And until next time, Shalom.